morning, it's Sunday, and it's Mike here with your bulletin announcements. Plenty to talk about this week, and you know what I mean. It's Christmas time, it's the Holy Week, and no better way to celebrate with us every single night at 6 p.m. as we're celebrating the furloughed Disney cast members who are going to be out on the lawn at 6 p.m. during our 12 days of Christmas singing their hearts out. If you've already been out, come back again. If you haven't seen it, it's a must. Uh, we're looking to raise money and support those Disney cast members who are going through a tough time this season. Um, this is your chance to help out. It's the 12 days of Christmas, 6 p.m. every night through Christmas Eve. Speaking of Christmas Eve, we have our services for Christmas Eve, a great time for you to bring some more family members to join us. Um, those services are gonna be at 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m. If you're not coming out to church yet, don't worry, we love seeing you virtually. And if you're doing it virtually, all the services are gonna be available for you. Three, five, seven, nine, and 11 o'clock. All services are available virtually as well. As usual, three ways to give, and this is the giving season. We're this close to our budget. Um, if you want to help us out, this is the time to do so. Three ways, as, as always, you can mail it in to this address here. You can text to this number here, or you can go online and click the Give button. Your three ways to give during this holy week. We're happy to see each and every this Sunday, and we're going to see you Thursday night as well for Christmas Eve. I believe it's Thursday night. There's a Wednesday night. You let me know when you see me. I'm off. <laughs> Christmas Eve coming your way. Holy week, 12 days of Christmas. God bless. Hey, friends, I want to welcome you. Today, we're going to have a little fun downtown celebration. This is where we live. This is where our church is located. Actually, church is located in your house. You who belong to Jesus Christ, guess what? He lives in you. His spirit moves in your house. I want you to know that God has anointed your home to be his personal sanctuary and you are his personal temple. And so how exciting to, to know that this Christmas, God with us, he's actually with you, he's for you, he loves you. And so thanks for tuning in today. Uh, there's so much to talk about, but before we get started, let's just celebrate Christmas and step into worship.
Hey friends, before we jump into the word, I, I want to thank all of you who've been contributing to our financial situation. As you know, we've been struggling, we've been hurting, and it's a lot of fun to see how many of you have stepped up to the plate and said, the church is hurting, the Lord needs my, my resources, well then I'm stepping in, and, and thank you. People are giving their lives to Jesus. We're watching folks who are struggling right now find peace with God and solutions. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to folks who've lost loved ones. I'm talking about people who are dealing financially with, with some difficult times. Folks who are struggling within. You know, when you bring the Word of God to them and you show them how God can move in their life, guess what's happening? God's on the move. It's a big deal. He loves you. He cares for you. And so, Christian, thanks for supporting the ministry because you're making it happen. And, and so uh, we're hoping that everybody is going to help us meet the budget at the end of the year. This is our goal. So if you'd be inclined to, to make a gift to the Lord, uh, when you honor him, he's going to honor you. But whether he honors you or not, he loves you. He saved you. He's got an eternity waiting for you. He's asking us to team up with him and, and spread the gospel. And so that's what we're about. That's what we're doing. And so uh, thank you for, for being part of the onward motion of God in our church. Well, we're going to jump into the scriptures today. And as you know, we've been discussing the invitation to the eternal banquet. And, you know, we talked about who's invited, who's going to be on the guest list, which is everybody. We've talked about the meal that's provided, and that is uh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And today, I want to talk about what we bring the host, <laughs> okay? And, and we all know the story of the three wise men. They see a star while they're in Babylon, and they follow the star to where Jesus is, and they bring gifts to him and worship him. By the way, Monday, tomorrow, for the first time since 1200 A.D., the star of Bethlehem is going to be seen again. So this is kind of an exciting moment for us to be preaching on the star and the star showing up again. You almost wonder if the craziness of the world, maybe there's something big and special going on. Maybe God's stepping into our lives right now. Well, first thing I want to talk about today is <clears throat> it's customary when you and I go to somebody's house and, and to bring a gift. When we're invited to a party, you know, we're we're expected to bring a gift. This is something that you, you learn, you know, when you're a bachelor, you don't know these things. Then you get married. And, you know, I remember getting an invite to a, a, a party and my, my wife says, we have to bring something. I'm like, why do we have to bring something? She goes, are you that uncouth? I was, okay. We're supposed to bring something. It's a way to show our appreciation. It's a way to step into somebody's life and say, thanks for inviting me to the party. And, you know, a lot of times, well, you know, we re-gift a bottle of wine that was given to us, or we have this little home decor that we think would be a nice way of showing our appreciation. But there's another kind of gift. There's a gift that, that's thought out and sought out and purchased. It's something that we align with the person's personality. It's more than just, hey, thanks for inviting me to the party. It's more like, I, I want you to know how much I care about you, how special you are to me, how important you are to me, and, and we get something specifically for them. Well, I want you to know, first of all, when you're invited to the eternal banquet, huh, the only thing God really wants is you to show up. You know, I talked about this last week. When I'm throwing a party and people that I really want there aren't going to come, it, it, it hurts my heart. But, but you're my best friend. I, I, you know, can't you change your, your, your schedule to, to, to let me bring my culinary artwork and to deepen our friendship? And, and, and this is what God has done. He wants you to be at the eternal banquet. He's inviting you to step into his presence and never leave. He's done everything he can to, to make this invitation sweet. He sent Jesus to remove the sin that destroys our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. He's put his very presence, his Holy Spirit inside of us so that we always have access to God, a spiritual GPS to guide our steps, the empowerment to, to 
overcome, to embrace the promises, to see his, his touch released through our lives. The Lord says, I want you to be part of me. And really, friends, if you think about it, life is relationships. That's what life's all about. And the most important relationship is the one you have with God. And this is the invite. This is what God is asking you to come into. And so I just want you to know that, well, when he invites you to the party, you have to understand something. Remember, we talked about this the first week of our, our, our series. He clothes you. He gives you the party clothes necessary to come to the eternal banquet. And, and that, that clothing is what? It's Jesus Christ. You know, my wife watches the Hallmark Christmas Story channels, okay? And it's ongoing, the whole story. And one of the major themes in these stories is that um, the woman who's the, the star of the show she'll get a package and she opens up the package and it's a dress for her to wear to the event, the ball, the gala, the, the special party. And, you know, and I'm watching this and I'm going, are you kidding me? Because, you know, I buy dresses for my wife and there's so many things that can go wrong with the purchase. Okay. First of all, is it the right size? I mean, the accurate size. Does it have the right neckline, the right bosom, the right waistline, the right length? Is it the right material? Does it have the right contours? I mean, just to be able to pick out a dress and send it to a woman, it's just not that easy. This is Hollywood, if you ask me. In fact, this is probably the one time when it's better to just go ahead and get a gift card. Which brings us to this whole season. This whole season, what are we doing? Well, we're purchasing gifts for people. And when you're purchasing a gift, you're thinking about their personality. You're thinking about what they need. You're thinking about their hobbies and interests because you want them to say, wow, I love this gift. Which brings us to Jesus Christ. What do we bring the Lord? Well, this is where the three wise men come into our story. They see the star, they're prompted to follow him. And by the way, the wise men, they're kind of amazing guys because they're, they're the descendants of Daniel's ministry. 500 years earlier, they were, uh, Israel was exiled to Babylon and a lot of people stayed. And so they got absorbed into the culture. When the Persians took them over, the smart you know, Israelites became a big a big part of this, this culture. And so 500 years later, they're still looking for the Messiah. And suddenly they see the stars, they're reading the scriptures, they're studying everything that Daniel says, and they're prompted by the Holy Spirit to go find the baby in Bethlehem. And when they show up, what do they bring? Gifts. And, and what kind of gifts? Well, there's three mentioned. There's gold, okay? And, and we all know what gold is. It's the standard, the gold standard. You know, with the price of gold goes up or down, it's the most valuable, precious metal. Um, you know, we get a gold ring on our finger. Artwork is made of gold. You know, our, we ornate our buildings with gold. It's the, this, the money that, that is the currency you want to have because, you know, the, the dollar bill might go out of whack, but gold always stays. You win the gold medal. What it is, it's basically bringing our best to the Lord. And, and this brings up a story I want to talk about from John chapter 12. Um, Jesus is at his best friend's, Lazarus. And, and it's kind of interesting to see what happens at the house. You know, Lazarus, his, one of his best friends, um, he reclines at the table and enjoys Jesus' presence. This is how he worships the Lord, giving him time. This is what the Lord wants, time. Martha, she's busy caring for the Lord and honoring him, worshiping him by serving Jesus and the meal and, and taking care of things. And then there's Mary. And Mary does something really unique. She takes a pound of perfume, a precious ointment, and she dumps it on Jesus' feet, all over his hair and his head and his body, and she wipes it off with her hair. I mean, this is a dramatic moment. And, 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 and 
you know, the smell would have filled the house. And I want you to realize that this, this worship that she's bringing to Jesus, it costs a year's salary. Okay, we're talking about a big investment that she makes to honor Jesus. Why would she do this? Well, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And she wants to say, thank you. And what's so crazy about it is, is she's bringing her best. She's bringing a year's worth of money, okay? Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. In our world, the church world, 20% uh, of the people will provide 80% of the finances for the ministry. It's kind of a sadness because, you know, we all love Jesus. We all thank Jesus for saving our souls. But 20% of the folks say, Lord, I want to honor you in a way that's a sacrifice to my budget, that impacts my life, that shows just how important you are. And this is the kind of gift that she's bringing. And, and, you know, it's weird that she would wipe the ointment with her hair. Because, you know, the hair is a woman's glory. And it's almost as like she's surrendering her glory to recognize his glory. Okay? This is a humble moment when she's just stepping in and, and, and giving up her pride and, and setting aside her dignity because she wants to worship Jesus. And here's what's even more powerful. One of the disciples, Judas, is criticizing her, going, why was this wasted? Like, honoring Jesus would be wasted time. And we got friends like that. They don't understand it. You know, why are you wasting your money? Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your life in a God that we're not even sure exists? Uh, we know he exists. Step into a relationship with him. Start praying and watching the answers come. Start watching a move in your heart, and, and you're going to realize he's alive. He's interested. And, and a lot of times, you know, we've had people in our church, you know, we're raising our hands when we worship. Or we had a flag waver for a while. And everybody loved the flag waver, except for the people that didn't like the flag waver. And they just would complain to me. Why is this person distracted in worship? And I said, well, do you ever focus on her face? Do you ever see how she's lost in worship? Do you see the beautiful movement? It's almost like the Holy Spirit has just taken her over. And I didn't see any of that. And sometimes people are not going to recognize how important Jesus is to us. And they're going to question the way we worship. But, you know, to be honest, worship is not supposed to be some ordinary thing. It's not supposed to be some part of our routine. No, when you see who Jesus is, when you understand what he's done for you, it becomes more personal, more intimate, more demonstrative. A sacrifice is involved because I want to say, thank you, God. And I'm just going to ask, have you ever been so overwhelmed in the presence of God that it led you to tears, <laughs> dropped you to your knees? Because that's what's happening to her. Actually, that's what happened to me this morning. I got up at 6 o'clock, went to the sanctuary, and wow, the Lord showed up. And I did get choked up, and I did get on my knees, and I was overwhelmed by the presence of God. And, you know, Mary, she's in public, and she doesn't care what people think. She's dropping to Jesus' feet. She's honoring him. She's worshiping him. And, and, and by the way, this smell is going to saturate the entire room. I told you a couple of weeks ago that, that the gift that she gave probably lingered on his body all the way to the cross. This is during Holy Week, just like three days before he goes to the cross. And what's going to linger on his body? There he is on the cross, and he puts his head this way, and there's the, the, the aroma of the people he died for that love him, that respond to him, that belong to him. What a nice gift it would be. Well, what I'm going to say is she left a sign of worship that released a scent that everybody else could, could, could be, well, moved by. You know, I think it was Hudson Taylor, the great missionary, he makes this statement. If your relationship with God doesn't affect your primary relationships, your, how, your house, your spouse, your children your work associates, even your dog and your cat, then maybe you should question whether you've really been converted. Because there's an aroma, there's an atmosphere that, that gets released when you belong to Jesus, and it changes your frown, and it moves in your life, in your heart, and it's powerful. And, and so this is what I'm talking about right now. You know, other people, what are they doing? They're simply enjoying the company of the Lord. 
Mary, she's absorbed in worship. And, and friends, what I'm talking about is a magnificent obsession. And this is a challenge for you and me. What drives you? What do you think about when you get up in the morning? Where do your thoughts drift to? Is Jesus the living God, the one who saved you and is moving in your life right now? Is this the one that is your heartbeat, your obsession? Because when it is, wow, the incredible ways that God shows up. You know, Jesus says in Matthew 9, 13, I don't desire sacrifice, I desire compassion. What God wants from us is a relationship from the heart. Well, that's what the gold represents from the wise men. Let's move on to their second gift. Uh, they bring frankincense. Now, you got to understand, frankincense is a big deal when you worship. In the Old Testament, you know how that you would light incense as an honor to the Lord? Frankincense is the ultimate uh, essential substance for worship. So basically what they're saying is you're worthy of worship. You know, we live in a world right now where people recognize, oh yeah, Jesus was a cool guy. He was an amazing moral teacher. You know, he was a, a, a uniquely spiritually tuned man. And you give that kind of person admiration. But when somebody's God in the flesh, it's a whole different form of admiration. It's called worship. And this is what these guys are bringing. And worship is basically recognizing what God has done for us, how much God desires you to be in a relationship with Him, to see the sacrifice He made to bridge you back into a relationship with Him. It's not that God needs to be worshipped because He's insecure. It's because He loves you so much. He wants you to recognize the love that He has for you. And this elicits the worship from our hearts. You know, Jesus, he's the source of life. He's the source of salvation, and, and he's the one we worship. Well, they brought myrrh. And myrrh is kind of a, a, a weird gift, because basically it's what's used when you embalm dead bodies. You know, you, know, you can see, you know, the one guy's got gold, and the other guy's got, you know, frankincense and then the guy shows up with myrrh and they go are you kidding me man it's a baby just being born what are you bringing something that has to do with him dying on you know and and, and really it's a very important substance worth its weight in gold okay Jesus has three interactions with myrrh when he's a baby it's brought to him when he's on the cross they offer it to him when he's getting put in the tomb it, it's involved so you see myrrh showing up at critical moments in Jesus' life. And, and, and friends, it's almost from the beginning we see that the cross was anticipated. And, and I want you to know something. God has a plan for you. And this is why it matters. You know, this intriguing gift of myrrh, it, it means that, that, that you're investing in somebody else's spiritual journey. Okay? The wise men. You know, they're bringing a gift that speaks to the Lord's ultimate calling. This is what's going on, okay? They know, they don't know that Jesus is going to go to the cross and die. And, and again, I wonder what the conversation was like. Why are you bringing this? And the one guy would say, you know, I just feel prompted. The way we feel prompted to follow this star, I feel prompted to bring this gift of myrrh. And that would be the Holy Spirit from the beginning saying Jesus is coming and he's got a purpose. It's to die for your sins. It's very personal. And, and, and the reason I'm making a big deal out of this is for maybe the best gift that you and I could bring somebody, it doesn't come in a box. Maybe it's you and me going out to Starbucks and, and saying to somebody, hey, can I tell you about Jesus? This COVID thing has got me weirded out and it's making me look for deeper questions and I want you to know about Jesus. I had a friend of ours from the church say she was prompted to take an old guy out to, to, to lunch and he was getting ready to die. And the three lunches that she had with him, his color changed, his attitude changed, his posture changed. Everything about him was transformed because somebody invested in him. And she was investing what? Her faith. What if you and I were to tell somebody about Jesus? What if you and I were to tell somebody who's struggling, hey, 
This is what God can do for you. This is how God can show up in your life. Well, one of the cool factors about the Magi's gift, three wise men, is the timing. You know, they are about, the, the, the holy family is about to be attacked by Herod, and an angel says, you got to get out of town. Well, guess what? The wise men bring a gift that's providential. Right when they need gold, frankincense, and myrrh to have currency to go to Egypt, guess what? The Lord provides. <laughs> and I want you to think about this. When you and I are prompted by God to give a gift, wow, you don't know what God knows, that that person needs this for their physical or their emotional or their spiritual well-being. And when you and I invest in somebody, this is what happens. This is what's available. Well, <clears throat> you and I, we have a calling. And it's twofold. First of all, we're called to bring, well, to care for the community of faith. There's a passage in 1 Corinthians 14. Everything must be done so the church is built up. Okay? This is Jesus' primary focus. His people, His church. I've told you before, if Jesus was driving down the road and He saw you broken down at the side of the road and a non-Christian, who would He stop to help? You, because you belong to Him. You're His child. He'd come to you and say, are you okay? I love you. Let me take care of you. And then He would send you down to the person who doesn't know Jesus, okay? But you are His top priority. And, and, and friends, what that means for you and me in a practical way is we have to take charge and spiritual responsibility for some of the people in our lives. You know, folks that used to go to church and don't, to stir up that conversation. Folks who are, are hurting physically, you're called to lay hands on them and, and ask God to bring healing, okay? We're supposed to love each other in a tangible way so that people experience the love of God and the non-Christian world sees what a difference our community makes. Well, that brings us to the second calling, and that's to share the love of God with those who don't know Him. You know, we're surrounded by people. In fact, me and Dee were talking today. How, how do people live without Jesus? We don't know how it works. I mean, He's so important to my, my processes, my thinking processes, my, the way I live my life. I can't understand when life comes tumbling in, you have no one to turn to. Well, I was reading this story about a snowstorm that happened in the north. And it was such a heavy, horrible storm that if you were on the roads, the snow stopped you and the snow covered you. And sadly, this one woman was in her car. And, and as she realized, she was trapped in the snow and she was going to possibly die from hypothermia. She pulled out a note from her, de her um, underneath and, and she said, I don't want to die this way. Six feet away from her was a bus full of people that also got overwhelmed by the storm. Six feet away, they were laughing, they were singing. The warmth of everybody was, was you know, keeping them alive. And, and you just realize, wow, I wonder how many people are around us that are struggling with life. And we have the solution, the presence of Jesus, the power of His Spirit, the love of God. And, and if only we would ask God to give us the eyes to see the people to bring His gifts to. Truly, one of the greatest gifts that you can give to Jesus is to bring somebody else to Him. Well, talking about you giving yourself to the Lord, and a lot of times we have gifts to bless other people. And, you know, sometimes we misunderstand. We think, well, who am I? You know, I, I'm not worthy of anything. You know, who am I? You know, I, I have nothing to offer. Uh, I'm not capable. And, and friends, you're making a mistake because what you're basically doing is you, 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 you're not having a lack of confidence in yourself. You don't understand the power that's been given to you. In Acts 1.8, Jesus says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, and then you're going to be my witnesses. <laughs> right now, you and I have at our disposal 
the power of God. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Okay? This is what uh, D.L. Moody said. He said, God commands us to be filled with the spirit. And if we're not filled, it's because we're living beneath our privileges. Okay? And oh, that it might not be said that we lived as paupers when you and I are children of the king. In other words, we should be praying for people to be touched by God regularly. And I'm telling you, I pray regularly and I see stuff happen. I don't go, oh, I wish they could get healed. I go, wait a minute. Whew. Maybe it's going to happen, maybe it won't. But you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. When you put belief into action, God goes, oh, somebody's taking my word seriously. Somebody believes in my power. Well, let me show up. Well, I want you to know everybody has a gift. In, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, everybody has a gift, a hymn, a revelation, an interpretation. You have something to bring to the table. It doesn't matter who you are, how smart you are, how uneducated you are, your, your station in life, because it's not about you. It's about God moving through you. And, and, and this is what God's amazing gift is. God with us on earth. And when he left, he didn't leave us alone. He didn't just say, good luck, guys. He gave us his presence, his Holy Spirit. And that's what makes you able and valuable to bring gifts to the people around you. Okay? And friends, what I'm telling you is that you get to be a kingdom builder. You get to partner with God. His Spirit moves through you. And what's amazing is he prompts you. This is how it works. In fact, I was praying for that this morning. Lord, Prompt me so that I might bring somebody to know you. All these gifts that I'm talking about, they're secondary to the one gift that the, the three wise men brought. They knelt down and worshiped Jesus. When you first give yourself your heart, when you recognize who he is, I mean, I was reading about these second graders who decided to do a, an impromptu nativity so they got the angel they got mary they got joseph they got a donkey and well you can't have you can't have a, a birth without a doctor there right and so they have a little doctor the doctor leans in and says it's a god <laughs> okay even the second graders realize who jesus is he's god with us in the flesh to take away the sins of the world that's who they worshiped and friends, that's who I'm inviting you to worship right now. They presented themselves. And you and I, in Romans 12, we're called to be a living sacrifice. Okay? This is what it means. You and I, as we live, we put into motion God. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to close up with a cool story. There's a story that the wise men on their way to see Jesus in Bethlehem, they stop at a house. And it's a poor person's house, and the, the, they have a child there who's crippled and needs a crutch. And so, um, he, you know, they, they, he, they knock on the door, and that mom says, go see who's at the door. And he goes there and says, mama, it's a king. And she goes, oh, you're such an exaggerator. There's another knock at the door. There's two kings. Oh, you're going to get in trouble for being a liar. Mama, there's three kings. And finally she gets up, and there's the three wise men. And they talk to this woman. And they tell her how their mission is to go find the king of kings. So she's like, wow, this is an important moment. And I'm a poor person. I have nothing to give. And this little crippled kid, he, he, he hears this and he's moved and he's got nothing to give. And so he decides, I'll give him my crutch. So he gives him the crutch that he needs to walk. And as the three wise men take the crutch and move on their way towards Bethlehem, something incredible happened. The very thing that he needed to walk, that he gave away to honor the King of Kings, released a healing, and he could now walk. But I, I want you to feel what's happening here, friends. The most treasured possession that he had when he gave it to Jesus, it transformed his entire world. The result of his generosity, his desire to honor Jesus, released a freedom, a healing in his life. And I just wonder, 
what we might be withholding from God that's keeping us from the radical movement, the radical blessing, the experience of God in our lives. Well, I guess today I'm talking about what do we bring the host? And you know, he first of all, he wants you. And you know what? He wants you to bring somebody else to the party. How excited. I remember one time I, I said, I want you to meet my best friend. And at the end of the Easter service, a little, little boy comes up. And I go, hey, what can I do for you? He goes, I want to meet your best friend. <laughs> it was like the most incredible moment. What if we were to bring the people around us to meet our best friend? And, and what if when we come, they can tell that he's our best friend by the way we worship him, the way he's a priority. He's an obsession to me, what God Almighty has made available to me, his love, his presence, his power, his eternal home. Yes. What do we bring the host? Let's show up. Let's bring our best. And let's bring someone with us. Amen. Well, friends, it's just about to be Christmas Eve. I want you to come to church. And I want you to bring somebody. Oh, it's not my style. It's his style. Ask Jesus, who can I bring? I mean, everybody knows you're supposed to go to Christmas Eve service, okay? So... If you offend him, so what? Maybe the Spirit will move and that invitation will lead to them having a relationship with God just because somebody cared enough to invite and ask. And if they come and the Spirit of God shows up, wow. And I guess maybe you could be watching and going, I don't know what I think about this Christianity. Friends, we can ponder or we could step in and say, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. And keep that mindset, and you're going to start praying and talking and looking and seeking. And this is what you know about Jesus. Seek, and you will find. And it's not because you went looking for him. God came to earth looking for you. And this is your moment. This is your invitation. Come and experience the living God. This is why you were made, and this is what's waiting for you in eternity. And he's ready to come alive in your life right now. Just say, Jesus, come into me. And boom, stay connected to our church or get involved in another church and watch lo the Lord come alive. Christmas Eve services, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Come, let's worship Jesus. Amen.
In today's fast-moving world, smartphones are integrated into our lives. We bank and shop on our smartphones, and many of us want to give with them too. Giving to the church with a text message is fast, easy, and versatile. With Give Plus Text, you can make a weekly offering or respond to a special appeal in just seconds. To give, you enter the church's 10-digit Give Plus Text number and the amount you wish to donate. Then, send your text. The first time you contribute with Give Plus Text, you'll receive a secure registration link. Click the link to go to our secure website where you'll enter your contact and payment information. Tap Process when you're done. After you've completed your registration, a text reply will verify that your gift has been received. We'll also email you a receipt. For future giving, you simply send a text with the amount you wish to give, and it will process automatically. You can also choose to make your gift recurring. Give Plus Text is that easy. Register, give, repeat. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Text and the other electronic giving options we offer.